Recall The Beverly Hillbillies, the timeless 1962 sitcom that captivated American audiences for almost a decade before bidding farewell to the Clampets. Originating from humble beginnings, the Clampets embarked on a captivating, life-altering odyssey, serving as a guiding inspiration for young families during the tumultuous 60s and 70s. Beyond its unbridled humor, the Beverly Hillbillies harbors a multitude of concealed truths that have remained veiled until now. Join us in this video as we delve into unedited photographs, unraveling the undisclosed secrets within the tragic undertones of this classic series. Top-charting melancholic tune, Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs, the iconic founders of the Foggy Mountain Boys, left an indelible mark on the landscape of country and bluegrass music. Despite their influential contributions to these genres, it was their composition, The Ballad of Jed Clampett, that catapulted them to mainstream success. This song, immortalized as the theme for the Beverly Hillbillies, not only secured its place at the top of the country charts in January 1963, but also achieved a commendable number 44 position on the pop charts showcasing its remarkable crossover appeal. The musical talents of Flat and Scruggs were not confined to the recording studio. They made their presence felt on the Beverly Hillbillies by making appearances in seven episodes, portraying themselves. Interestingly, the original on-air rendition of the theme song was not performed by Flat and Scruggs themselves, but by Jerry Scoggins, an individual with a surprising background. At the time, Scoggins was working as a stockbroker, making his involvement in the world of entertainment all the more unexpected. Nevertheless, his rendition of the catchy tune became synonymous with the show, further embedding it into the fabric of popular culture. The Ballad of Jed Clampett became more than just a theme song. It became a cultural phenomenon. The infectious melody and Scoggins' distinct vocal delivery resonated with audiences, contributing significantly to the show's charm and enduring popularity. The song's success was not solely limited to the small screen. Its crossover appeal demonstrated that it could captivate audiences across different musical landscapes. In a fascinating twist of fate, when a movie remake of The Beverly Hillbillies was in the works in 1993, Jerry Scoggins reached out to the studio expressing his interest in reprising his iconic performance. To the surprise of the studio, which was unaware that Scoggins was still alive, his offer added an unexpected and heartwarming element to the production. Hillbilly homage, crafting. The Beverly Hillbillies from personal roots. The genesis of the Beverly Hillbillies can be traced back to a pivotal moment in the life of its creator, Paul Henning, during a trip through the South in 1959. While exploring Civil War sites with his mother-in-law, Henning was struck by an intriguing concept, transplanting a rural Southerner into the heart of an urban environment. Initially envisioning New York City as the show's backdrop, practical considerations led to the choice of Beverly Hills as the setting. However, the roots of the series extend even further into Henning's childhood experiences in Missouri. A native of the South, Henning's passion for nature and rural life was kindled during his youth. As an enthusiastic member of the Boy Scouts, he embarked on camping expeditions in the Ozarks near Knoll, Missouri. These adventures, sometimes involving challenging 14-mile hikes into the wilderness, left an indelible mark on Henning. It was these memories that he would later draw upon when crafting the narrative for the Beverly Hillbillies. In an interview with the Television Academy Foundation, Henning warmly reminisced about his deep affection for hillbillies, a sentiment that had its roots in his Boy Scout days. His admiration for the rural way of life, coupled with a penchant for fish-out-of-water stories and cultural clashes, provided the creative spark for the beloved sitcom. The premise of the Beverly Hillbillies revolved around a family of farmers who, upon striking it rich, found themselves thrust into the opulent world of Beverly Hills. This comical contrast served as a rich platform for exploring the characters' interactions with the area's affluent residents, highlighting both the stark differences and surprising similarities between the two worlds. 
By mining his own experiences and showcasing a fondness for rural life, Paul Henning crafted a television classic that resonated with audiences and, in its own humorous way, underscored the value of cultural understanding. Television ratings plummeted to a sorrowful low. The ascent of the Beverly Hillbillies to television stardom was nothing short of meteoric, defying its initial detractors and swiftly claiming the top spot in the TV ratings within a mere three weeks of its debut. This rapid rise became the stuff of legends, as the sitcom not only reached the apex of popularity, but also held on to the coveted number one position for an impressive two seasons. The show's remarkable success continued, maintaining its status as a fixture in the top 20 for an astonishing eight seasons. Even in its final year, when its ratings experienced a slight dip, the Beverly Hillbillies had already etched its name indelibly in the annals of television history. The sheer numbers associated with the show's success were as astounding as a surprise uppercut from a kangaroo. Within just six weeks of its debut, the Beverly Hillbillies had become the most watched program on television. Between 1962 and 1964, an average of 57 million viewers tuned in to witness the comedic antics of the beloved Clampett clan. This exceptional viewership was not a fleeting phenomenon. The show's popularity endured, with particular episodes standing out as milestones in television history. Two episodes, which aired on January 8th and 15th in 1964, hold the distinction of being the second and fourth most watched television episodes of the entire decade, respectively. The episode titled The Giant Jackrabbit cemented its place as one of the most watched of all time, airing on the same day as President Lyndon B. Johnson's first State of the Union address, an event that underscores the cultural impact of the Beverly Hillbillies. Notably, the show attracted around 60 million viewers at a time when the U.S. population was approximately 190 million signifying that a staggering 44% of all American televisions were tuned in during its peak. The Beverly Hillbillies' unparalleled success is a testament to the power of audience engagement. Despite facing critical disapproval, the show not only captured the hearts and minds of millions, but also demonstrated that, in the realm of entertainment, the preferences of the audience can defy conventional expectations. The demise of the series caused by urban ascendancy. The cancellation of the Beverly Hillbillies, along with other iconic rural theme shows such as Petticoat Junction and Green Acres, marked a significant chapter in the history of television programming known as the Rural Purge. This strategic move, orchestrated by CBS in the early 1970s, aimed to overhaul the network's lineup to better align with the tastes and preferences of an evolving urban demographic, particularly the younger generation of viewers. During this transformative period, CBS believed that the urban demographic, with its burgeoning influence, was more inclined toward shows that addressed contemporary issues, boasted urban settings, and possessed a more sophisticated appeal. In a decisive maneuver, the network began systematically canceling shows with rural themes or settings, irrespective of their popularity or ratings. The Beverly Hillbillies, despite its enduring charm and dedicated fan base, was not exempt from the sweeping changes implemented during the rural purge. The decision to cancel such beloved classics reflected a broader shift in the television landscape, with CBS recalibrating its content to reflect the changing dynamics of American viewership. In the aftermath of the rural purge, CBS redirected its focus toward urban-themed shows, marking the advent of a new era in television programming. This shift not only transformed the network's lineup, but also signaled a broader industry acknowledgement of the evolving tastes and priorities of the American audience. While the Beverly Hillbillies and its rural-themed counterparts may have been casualties of this corporate strategy, their legacy endures as beloved classics that continue to resonate with audiences. The show's cancellation was not an indicator of its lack of popularity or cultural impact. Rather, it was a consequence of a strategic realignment within the television industry. Typecast, 
Max Baer Jr., also known as Maximilian Adelbert, made an indelible mark on television as the actor behind the dim-witted and endearing character Jethro Bodine in The Beverly Hillbillies. While fans of the show cherished his portrayal, Bear faced an unexpected challenge when the series came to an end. Despite the audience's affection for Jethro, Bayer found himself grappling with a belief that playing the lovable but simple-minded character had cast a shadow over his acting career. After the conclusion of The Beverly Hillbillies, Bear set out to audition for various roles, eager to showcase his range and versatility as an actor. However, he encountered a frustrating pattern as he faced rejection from every audition. Bear became convinced that he was being typecast, pigeonholed into the image of Jethro Bodine, a role he had played with such comedic brilliance that it seemingly overshadowed his ability to be seen in other capacities. The challenge of breaking free from the typecasting associated with a beloved character is a common struggle for actors, and Max Bear Jr. was no exception. Despite his talent and a desire to explore diverse roles, the industry seemed reluctant to see him beyond the iconic character he had portrayed so convincingly. In response to this perceived limitation, Bear made a strategic decision to pivot his career. Recognizing the challenges he faced in the realm of acting, he turned his focus toward writing, directing, and producing. This shift allowed him to channel his creativity in new and fulfilling ways, demonstrating a resilience and adaptability that extended beyond the confines of his on-screen persona. Max Bayer Jr. has continued to carve out a meaningful career behind the scenes, contributing to the entertainment industry as a writer, director, and producer. His decision to embrace a different aspect of the creative process highlights not only his pragmatic response to the challenges of typecasting, but also his enduring passion for storytelling in various forms. Sharon Tate, an emerging actress destined for stardom, gained recognition as a household name tragically linked to one of the darkest chapters in Hollywood history. Her life was cut short when she, along with her friends, fell victim to the brutal murders orchestrated by the Manson family. Compounding the tragedy, Tate was eight months pregnant at the time. Before this devastating event, she had a notable but relatively unknown recurring role in the Beverly Hillbillies. A lesser-known fact about Sharon Tate's involvement in the show is that she played a character in disguise, donning a brunette wig for the role. Tate's concealed presence extended over 15 episodes, contributing to the show's narrative in a way that often goes unnoticed. Her untimely death further imbued her association with the Beverly Hillbillies with a poignant and melancholic undertone. Beyond the cast and characters, one iconic element of the show was the Jalopy, a 1921 broken-down Oldsmobile Model 46 Roadster. The Jalopy, though just a car, became as recognizable as the members of the cast. After the conclusion of the Beverly Hillbillies, the jalopy was donated to a museum for the bicentennial celebrations and even traveled to England for a period. This unique piece of television history, immortalized in the minds of viewers, remains an enduring symbol of the show's quirky charm. The financial success of the Beverly Hillbillies surpassed all expectations, becoming a formidable money-making machine. The show generated a staggering $25 million when it first started, and by the time it concluded, it had raked in an astonishing $100 million. In contemporary terms, this would equate to approximately $518 million, an impressive feat that solidified the show's place in television history. The unprecedented financial success not only benefited the network, but also contributed to the enduring legacy of the Beverly Hillbillies and its lasting impact on popular culture. The critics harbored an intense aversion towards it. The emergence of the Beverly Hillbillies onto the television scene in the early 1960s marked a rare phenomenon where a show not only captured the hearts of millions, but also left critics scratching their heads in bewilderment. 
It was, in essence, a television anomaly that defied expectations and became a cultural touchstone for a generation. Despite the scathing reviews from esteemed publications such as the New York Times, Variety, and Time magazine, the Beverly Hillbillies managed to rise above the elitist disapproval and carve out a special place in the hearts of its viewers. Blockbuster TV Must-see sitcoms in the network era chronicles the show's journey, emphasizing that the negative critiques did little to deter its popularity. In fact, the sitcom appeared to thrive under the weight of such criticism. The critical animosity directed towards the Beverly Hillbillies persisted throughout its entire run. Yet this seemed inconsequential in the face of the unwavering love it received from its audience. The characters and their comedic antics struck a chord with viewers, fostering a love affair that perplexed the media. It was as if there existed a profound disconnection between the sophisticated tastes of critics and the genuine enjoyment derived by everyday viewers. The very existence of this dissonance underscores a broader societal phenomenon, a divide between the opinions of media elites and the preferences of the general public. While critics may have dismissed the Beverly Hillbillies as lacking in artistic merit or sophistication, its enduring popularity among everyday viewers spoke to the show's ability to resonate on a different level. Buddy Ebsen's Literary Triumph, From Rejection to Resilience Buddy Ebsen, renowned for his iconic portrayal of Jed Clampett in The Beverly Hillbillies, embarked on a remarkable creative journey after retiring from acting. His foray into writing led to the creation of a novel titled Kelly's Quest, a poignant collection of poems that unfolds the emotional journey of a young girl. Within its verses, readers traverse the spectrum of human experience, encountering moments of joy, heartbreak, and profound lessons about love and life. Despite Ebsen's established reputation and the compelling narrative of Kelly's Quest, the journey to publication proved to be a challenging one. Ebsen, undeterred by the initial setbacks, approached nine different publishers, only to face rejection at every turn. Faced with the choice of surrendering to these obstacles or forging his path, Ebsen opted for the latter, deciding to take matters into his own hands and self-publish the book. This decision marked a pivotal moment in Ebsen's writing career. Undaunted by the industry's initial reluctance to embrace his work, he demonstrated a profound belief in the value of his creative expression. With determination and perseverance, Ebsen navigated the intricate landscape of self-publishing, showcasing not only his resilience, but also a deep commitment to sharing his artistic vision with the world. The payoff for Ebsen's tenacity was significant. Kelly's quest defied the odds and ascended to the impressive position of number three on the Los Angeles Times paperback bestseller list in 2001. This achievement underscored not only Ebsen's prowess as a writer, but also served as a powerful testament to the transformative impact of persistence and self-belief in the face of adversity. Inaccuracy in the Depiction of Petroleum the central premise of the Beverly Hillbillies, while undeniably entertaining and engaging, takes a significant departure from geological reality. The show's narrative unfolds when Jed Clampett, a struggling mountaineer, stumbles upon a valuable oil deposit while hunting, leading to his family's unexpected journey from rural life to the opulence of Beverly Hills. In the world of the show, this accidental oil discovery becomes the catalyst for the Clampett family's transformation into wealthy Beverly Hills residents. However, in the real world, such a scenario would be highly unlikely. Oil deposits, the result of ancient organic materials subjected to heat and pressure over millions of years, are not typically found in mountainous regions. The geological conditions necessary for the formation of oil reservoirs are more commonly associated with flat plains, deserts, and beneath the ocean floor, where sedimentary rock layers conducive to oil formation are prevalent. Mountainous regions, formed through the collision of tectonic plates and resulting in the uplift and folding of the Earth's crust, 
do not offer the geological conditions necessary for the creation of oil deposits. The clash between the show's premise and geological reality highlights a significant departure from scientific accuracy in favor of storytelling creativity. However, this deviation from geological norms is not a flaw in the Beverly Hillbillies. It's an intentional choice made in the realm of fiction. The show, designed primarily to entertain rather than educate, takes creative liberties with reality to weave a narrative that captures the imagination of its audience. The charm and appeal of the Beverly Hillbillies lie not in the geological accuracy of its premise but in the characters, their humorous fish-out-of-water experiences, and the cultural clashes they encounter as they navigate the unfamiliar terrain of Beverly Hills. Cinematic Disappointment The 1993 Beverly Hillbillies movie embarked on a challenging mission to recapture the enchantment of the original series that had become a cultural phenomenon. However, despite its aspirations, the film fell notably short of expectations, struggling to resonate with both critics and audiences. Unlike the television show, which defied critical disapproval and won the hearts of millions, the cinematic adaptation failed to replicate the magic that made the Clampett family household names. One significant factor contributing to the movie's lackluster reception was the casting of different actors to portray the beloved hillbilly characters. The original series had forged strong connections between viewers and the ensemble cast, making the characters iconic and endearing. When the film opted for a new cast, it faced the daunting challenge of recreating the chemistry and nostalgia that had endeared the characters to the audience in the first place. Unfortunately, the new actors struggled to capture the essence and charm that had made the television series such a resounding success. Fans of the original series, having formed emotional attachments to the original cast, found it difficult to embrace the reinterpretation of their beloved characters. The absence of familiar faces may have contributed to a sense of disconnect, and the film, in turn, failed to evoke the same level of emotional resonance that the television series effortlessly achieved. The critical reception of the movie further compounded its struggles. Critics, often unforgiving in their assessments, were particularly harsh on the adaptation. Some critics went so far as to label it one of the worst movies of this or any year emphasizing the extent to which the film fell short of expectations. The scathing reviews pointed to a failure in capturing the enduring appeal and heartwarming charm that had defined the original Beverly Hillbillies series, Granny's Culinary Collection. Irene Ryan, a seasoned actress with an Emmy nomination to her name, had a multifaceted career that spanned both the vaudeville stage and the television screen. However, she became an enduring and beloved figure in popular culture for her iconic portrayal of Granny in the Beverly Hillbillies. The character of Granny resonated with audiences for her wit, humor, and culinary prowess, despite her penchant for cooking up unconventional dishes, most notably fried possums. Granny's culinary escapades and her distinctive personality left an indelible mark on the show's legacy. Surprisingly, despite the unconventional nature of her recipes, Granny's character inspired a cookbook that captured the hearts and kitchens of fans. Aptly titled Granny's Beverly Hillbillies Cookbook, it became a delightful compilation of delicious recipes, complemented by vibrant photographs and character profiles. The cookbook, a testament to the enduring popularity of the Beverly Hillbillies, transcended the boundaries of television entertainment, bringing the charm of Granny's Vittles into the homes of fans. It not only showcased the culinary creativity associated with Granny's character, but also provided a unique way for fans to connect with the show outside the realm of television. With the inclusion of character profiles, the cookbook served as a nostalgic homage to the beloved characters of the Beverly Hillbillies, allowing fans to reminisce about the endearing qualities that made the show a cultural phenomenon.
Irene Ryan's portrayal of Granny, with her culinary adventures and memorable personality, played a pivotal role in making the character a cultural icon, and the cookbook became a tangible extension of this legacy. Age Rumors The Beverly Hillbillies, a classic sitcom, gave rise to a curious and persistent rumor that Irene Ryan, the actress who portrayed the feisty Granny, was actually younger than Donna Douglas, who played the sweet and innocent Ellie May. The speculation suggested that extensive makeup application contributed to Irene's appearance of advanced age. In reality, Irene Ryan was born in 1902, while Donna Douglas was born in 1933, making Irene 31 years older than Donna. The unfounded rumor highlighted the transformative power of makeup in the world of television and film, where skilled makeup artists can age or rejuvenate actors to fit specific character roles. However, the age difference between Irene Ryan and Donna Douglas was significant, and the rumor was ultimately debunked by the facts. Buddy Ebsen, who played the iconic Jed Clampett on the show, was known to playfully address this rumor. He would humorously quip about the public's supposed naivety in believing such an outrageous notion. Ebsen's light-hearted responses not only showcased his wit, but also served to dispel the baseless rumor, highlighting the importance of separating on-screen portrayals from the actor's real ages. The rumor surrounding Irene Ryan's age exemplifies how the magic of Hollywood can sometimes blur the lines between fiction and reality. While makeup and skilled artistry can convincingly alter an actor's appearance, the underlying truth remains unchanged. What do you think about the untold truths of the Beverly Hillbillies? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this, and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.